Welcome to Booktopia TV. I'm John Purcell and I'm here with a Booktopia favourite, Kylie Ladd, to talk about her new book, Mothers and Daughters. Welcome, Kylie. Thanks, John. We've um, been supporting your books from after the fall and we really jumped on um, last summer because we were just we were a bit behind on after the fall, I must admit. <laughs> um, but last summer just was absolutely brilliant and we, we made as much noise as we possibly could about it because we, we all fell in love with it. Um, and Into My Arms, another great success, and we actually sold far more of that um, than last, last summer. You're building in, in this, this market, and we're all looking very much forward to the mothers and daughters and seeing how that goes on this uh, in, in September, which is a, a, a really um, big month for, for, for fiction. Um, I wanted to uh, say straight off, um, because there's a kind of a little bit of a uh, controversy around uh, women's fiction uh, versus literature and, and the, the labels people place on, on things. I think that you're a literary author. Um, the publisher thinks you're a women's fiction or contemporary women's fiction author. Where do you sit? Where do you sit in, the way, in where you write and, and what you think of your own writing? When I started writing fiction, I described myself as a psychologist because I didn't want to call myself an author. That sounded too grand. Now if I call, and, and then I got used to calling myself an author and I just call myself an author or a novelist. And now I must say I find more often than not that I call myself a women's fiction author or a popular fiction author or a contemporary fiction author because that seems to mean more things to, to more people. And it's, it's a way, I guess, for people to, to know what sort of stuff I write. But I also found myself thinking the other day when I said that to someone that I'd just met, I was thinking, I wonder if I've been browbeaten into saying this, not by my publisher, who I love and adore, um, but into thinking of that way of myself because that's the way that so much women's fiction is presented, or when I say women's fiction, I mean fiction written by women, is presented as women's fiction or commercial fiction. And I think maybe I've just adopted that mantle as I've gone along uh, because I certainly didn't think that about my writing when I started. I didn't think of myself as anything in particular. I just wanted to write as well as I could and do the best job that I could and, and hope that other people would enjoy that. Well, I, I, when, when, I, when I picked it up, I, I suppose when I, when I saw After the Fall, I made, a, I made an assumption. And that assumption was completely wrong when I um, read it and when I picked up last summer. It was confirmed that, that these are novels which have uh, deal with, with, with the big issues in a very sensitive way and you, the way in which you're able to um, touch on the small things in life. I think Walter Scott, um, on writing about, uh, I'm not saying that you're Jane Austen, but <laughs> on writing about Jane Austen, um, he said that she does the small things so well, well, I can only do the big bangs. Um, and so she, she was able to touch on the emotions and, and the, the tiny things which, which really make a big difference in, in, in life. Um, and in Last Summer and in Into My Arms, you get those, those really small observations um, and picked up. Is that somehow tied up with your other life as, as, a, as, as a psychologist like a, yeah. or is it tied up as my other life as a woman who yeah. has to notice <laughs> the details uh, I'm not sure look firstly I'm going to say thank you for noticing that because I think I'm a small picture writer um, I don't mind the comparison to Jane Austen at all <laughs> so that's fun not just because of her sales <laughs> and, and her name but because I like the small canvas as well, I must say. I, you know, Jane Austen has, uh, has been criticised, maybe, well, maybe not criticised, but uh, she's known for writing on a small canvas. It's all about villages. It's not about the wider world. But I love writing on a small canvas. I love that this latest book, actually, was a bit of a technical challenge because it's only set across eight days. I've never done a book in such a short period of time. But I love how it focuses you and it makes you work harder, I think, to bring out your characters or to... To, to get across what you're, you're trying to say. Is it related to my work as a psychologist? Possibly, I don't know, I've been a psychologist so long now, I've forgotten what it's like not to look at people and try and analyse them. Maybe it was an interest that was there from the beginning of the so. a psychologist. I think all. that's why I went into psychology yeah. and, and writing at the same time. Well, I always wanted to go into writing, the psychology was always ever just to pay the bills. Thankfully, I quite enjoy it, so. Well, um, in, in After the Fall, you, you touch on your, your subject is that, that subject of infidelity, which yeah. is pretty major. Um, in, in Last Summer, you tackle that small subject, death. death yes. um, <laughs> um, and in Into My Arms, it's a more controversial subject um, with, with uh, there was incest and. and Genetic um, sexual attraction, that. technically, <laughs> yeah. but yes, incest, um, yes. Uh, and also, there was the, um, the refugees um, uh, plot Thank as you. well. Yes, yeah. there was. Yeah. So, these are, these are not small issues, these are big issues that you're tackling and you, um, what, what, are, what are the issues that are, that are in Mothers and Daughters, your new novel? 
Okay, well, there, there's two issues. Um, as the title suggests, the main issue, I guess, is about um, women's relationships with each other. Uh, the, the, the book is set uh, with four mothers going away with their four teenage daughters for a holiday together, and it's about how the women get on and how the daughters get on, but also about the women watching their daughters grow up. Um, so I guess, again, in some ways I'm coming back to themes of maybe not death, but certainly ageing and, um, and seeing your life come full circle. Uh, so there's certainly that, that's a big theme. There's another theme that I didn't expect to be in the book, but it emerged once I started writing, and that's a theme about um, Indigenous Australia, I guess. And I'm a bit wary of saying that because I don't want to sound like I did, I didn't want to sound with the refugees in, in Into My Arms. I don't want to seem like I'm standing up on a soapbox. Um, moralising about these things because I'm not but in both cases there are things that have come into my own life and, and everything that comes into my own life ends up in my books. Um, into my arms I've done some work as a psychologist for, a, for the Asylum Seeker Centre in Melbourne and that's what gave me the idea to start to, to use those threads in that book. In this book um, the Indigenous theme came in because my family um, and I spent a year in Broome um, back in 2010. It was my husband's um, midlife crisis, or this <laughs> sea change he liked to call it, but really it was his midlife crisis. And we had a year up there, and I guess um, living in uh, Broome's 60% uh, Indigenous, my children went to a school which was 70% Indigenous, and um, just seeing how that on, impacted on us had to come out in the fiction. But it came out in a way that uh, perhaps I didn't expect. And I think overall, Mothers and Daughters as a book is about... Um, the two themes tie together. I, I would like to think the book is about the possibilities of reconciliation, without that sounding too sentimental or too, too optimistic. I don't have any great answers for the problems that the um, that Indigenous people face, uh, for the lowered life expectancy, for the homelessness, for the unemployment, for all those things. Um, I don't have any answers for the problems that teenage daughters and their mothers face either. I'm about to have a teenage daughter very soon. Um, but I wanted the book to be hopefully showing people trying to make their way back to each other. One of the wonderful things about literature is that it has the, the power to um, transport us or take us into an issue that we may never... Have. We might, might not pick up a biography or a non-fiction mm. book about, about Indigenous Australia or even about mothers and daughters, and yet you get involved in the story, you, you're, you're suckered in by the, by the art of the, of the novelist who then um, makes you sort of go through a virtual reality and testing out these ideas with, in the comfort of your, of your armchair. Yes. Um, before you know, without, without without it being too overwhelming, um, uh, but you do, it does get you emotionally. Yeah, that's that's the key. There could be a change in your um, the way you think about the issue. Yes. Uh, look, hopefully, I hope that's the case. Yes, and I totally agree with you. That's one of the best things about being a reader is is when that happens to you that you realise you've experienced a whole different viewpoint or you've been made to think about something and it was quite pleasurable to do so. You didn't even realise you were being made to think about it. That's why I find it so strange when people say they didn't like the character or the main character and I think well sometimes my favourite books are the ones where the character, there's nothing that, that I find familiar, yes. there's nothing that I would like about it Yes. but I'm dragged through and I'm seeing the world through a whole different point of view and therefore my, my world is expanded. Yeah, yeah. The um, one of the main characters in Mothers and Daughters, Fiona, is um, a middle-aged um, Melbourne woman doing doing okay um, but she's really really racist and uh, I've only had a couple of reviews for the book because um, it's not quite out yet um, but the first review picked on the fact that she was quite racist and said she's uncomfortably racist and maybe she's a bit too racist but look I made Fiona that racist because I hear the racism that Fiona expresses all the time around me in my work but also I hear it from my friends too and my family and I wanted to make her uncomfortably racist. I wanted people to see those words on the page, you know, the, the nasty words, the, the, the nigger type words that people get upset about and have to think about how that made them feel or, or, or what it really meant and, and if it did hurt them or bother them. The other thing that, that, um, I've, that I'm very aware of with, with your career and it's how we met uh, is the social media side of things. Um, you're very adept at it and you have um, a, a great warm community of, of friends that you've met uh, and you know through Twitter. Yeah, I do. Um, and for someone who doesn't actually own a phone, um, <laughs> it's quite impressive <laughs> to have, have such a social media um, presence um, through through the normal channels of, of a computer. Because you are so open on social media and, and, and Facebook and Twitter, um, 
there are times when you when when I look, oh, that looks painful. The whole writing process uh, is it a, is it a pleasurable pursuit for you or not? Yeah, look, I do find it hard. I, I don't have a lot. I'm not one of these writers that walks around with a notebook brimming with ideas. I, I said that earlier. Um, I find um, excruciating to put yourself on the page and, and know that other people are going to read it and judge you. Um, my lovely publicist uh, at Allen and Unwin, Louise, sent me a, a review the other day and I was at work and I couldn't resist reading it while I was seeing the patient, which is terrible. Um, she, was, she was actually had gone to... She'd gone to get a glass of water and go to the toilet and then come back in. And she came back into the room and she said, are you all right? You look white. And I said, I'm fine, thank you. And I was just terrified because I've been reading a review. God, that so makes me sound erotic. It was a really good review. Thank you, Adelaide Advertiser. Um, but, I, yeah, I find the whole thing painful. But I can't seem to stop doing it either. One last question. And um, this is... This is partly a concern of, of, of mine, which I'm going to share with you, and hopefully you'll, you'll understand um, and, and feel the same way. Um, in this in this current environment, how do you how do you personally stop um, the influence of the the thoughtless, the idiotic, the stupid, the nonsense that is just pumped out into the universe from all channels, it seems at the moment, yeah. and keep your little artist self safe from from all the sort of the salesmanship, the marketing, the all the noise. This is going to sound hope, hopelessly Pollyanna-ish, but I think you've just got to keep being polite and keep talking to the people that talk to you and guard your corner. And, yeah, I just go for a run every time it all gets too much or, or yell at the kids a bit, they'll attest to that, and then say, oh, I'm sorry, Mum is really stressed because of something someone said online, and they're OK about that now. But, uh, yeah, it's hard. Um, there's no denying that. Um, it's not the hardest thing in the world, but, but things have changed and you do have to protect yourself and find your way to protect yourself. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to have you here finally. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Kylie's new book, Mothers and Daughters, is available from booktoken.com.au right now.